going on guys it's steve this is the start of the countdown to the nba season so we're going to start off with the 2016 2017 new york knicks we are going to break them down and then have a prediction to where they'll finish in the eastern conference how they'll play during the regular season how carmelo will do how derrick rose will do those type of things so let's start i'm just going to tell you guys their 2016 2017 roster first I'm just going to tell you guys players that I think will get minutes. I'm not going to name everyone, so let's just go. We got Louis Amundsen. We got Ron Baker. We got Carmelo Anthony. Justin Holiday, Brandon Jennings. Hernan Gomez. Kuzminskis. Courtney Lee. Joe Kim Noah. Kylo Quinn. Christos Porzingis. Derek Rose. Lance Thomas. And Sasha Vujicic. So, when you look at that, that's a pretty deep bench. Um, here's the thing. Their rotation in the front court is remarkable. If you look at their most likely um, their starting lineup, it's most likely going to be Derrick Rose, Courtney Lee, Carmelo Anthony, Kristaps Porzingis, and Joe Kim Noah. So to come in for Joe Kim Noah and Kristaps Porzingis, we got Hernan Gomez, but we also have Kylo Quinn. But it's not just that. Here's the thing: the Knicks can play small ball. The Knicks can play Derrick Rose, Courtney Lee. Lance Thomas, Carmelo Anthony, and Kristaps Porzingis. That way, they can spread the floor easier. You know, they can play run-and-gun type offense. Well, I'm not sure how they're going to play with Carmelo Anthony because Carmelo Anthony does, did say he wants to slow down his game a bit, play that half-court set, which is good for him to preserve his body for the long run when the playoffs come because there's no doubt about it that the New York Knicks are going to make the NBA playoffs this year. So, let's continue. So let's look at their backcourt now. We have Brandon Jennings coming off the bench for Derrick Rose. We have Courtney Lee. Here's where trouble arises. They don't have a great they don't have great flexibility in their backcourt. If you look at their flexibility, it's really just Derrick Rose, Brandon Jennings, and Courtney Lee. I mean, yeah, Lance Thomas can play the two spot, but I mean he's kind of big to be playing the two spot, to be honest. He's six eight, two hundred and twenty five pounds, you know? I mean he it can he can do it, but you know, just not that, not not the most ideal scenario. You also have Justin Holiday who can play the two spot, which is good because he's a pretty solid guard. He's 6'6", 185 pounds. He has three years of experience. If you guys don't know, he's from Washington State. Um, but yeah, so, you know, overall, in terms of the roster, it's a pretty solid roster. I would put it up there in the top five rosters in the NBA. If I would just have to go off the top of my head, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers, Obviously, the Knicks, I said, were in there. This is not in any particular order. The Golden State Warriors, San Antonio Spurs, and the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, I want to go down and break down each player by position, how I think their impact will be, if they'll be healthy or not. Here's the thing. Derrick Rose has never been on a team where he is not the number one option. Even after his post-prime era in Chicago, after that prime MVP, Derrick Rose in 2011, after he got injured, he was still the number one option. Let's be realistic for a second. Jimmy Butler was not the number one option on that team. Some people say it's debatable. I don't think it's debatable at all. Derrick Rose was still that man. He was still the one that hit that game-winning shot in 2015 against Cleveland. He was still the man. Now, he is the third option for the New York Knicks. And this is the perfect, most ideal scenario slash situation that he could possibly be in in this point in his career. Because this is his last season. This is his contract year. He needs to get paid. Here's the thing. If he wants the New York Knicks to re-sign him, which I'm pretty sure they probably will midway through the season, offer him an extension or re-sign him or whatever they're going to do, he needs to do this. I predict anywhere from 10 to 17 points per game more likely if i want to be more specific i would say 16 and a half points per game and around seven assists per game would be ideal for him i would say playing him around 32 minutes per game would be perfect you know you don't want to put too much wear and tear on those legs um you want to you want to keep him healthy especially for the postseason and uh don't don't let him play more than 75 games i wouldn't even let him play more than 70 games i would say around the 65 game mark maybe 70 at most but more than that, it's just unnecessary, to be honest. The only way I would say, you know what, we need to play him is if we're in a position where we need to fight, you know, to get second seed or third seed or fourth seed. Because if the New York Knicks 
are in that position where they need the fight to get home court advantage, they need to play Derrick Rose. But that's the perfect scenario for Derrick Rose at this point in his career. You know, just it, it, it's perfect, man. Really, it, it's perfect for him at this point in his career. He's 27 years old. He's still a beast, um, but he's not what he used to be, which is why it's great for him to be the third option on a potential contending team in the Eastern Conference. So let's go on. By the way, I'm just going to, anyway, let's just go on to Courtney Lee. Courtney Lee, in terms of points per game, you know, he's not really going to be that big, maybe five to 10 points per game. Really what's going to be crucial for him is playing great perimeter defense, helping the New York Knicks on the defensive end, and just spreading the floor for Carmelo Anthony and Christos Porzingis to create their shots. Him spreading the floor is vital to this New York Knicks offense, especially if they're going to try and play that triangle offense, which is going to be tough in the modern-day era. But I think it can happen. Why? Because Christos Porzingis can spread the floor. He's like a prime Chris Bosh. Let's go on to Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony, like I said in the previous video that you guys watched earlier today, Carmelo Anthony is going to have the best season possibly in his career. So let's move on because I already broke down Carmelo Anthony in the previous video. If you didn't see the previous video, go check it out. Link will not be in the description. Just go to my channel and check it out. I'm just kidding. The link will be in the description below. Anyway, let's go on to Christos Porzingis. Christos Porzingis, I predict to have a breakout season. Of course, he's only 21 years old. He's 7'3", 235 pounds. He still needs to put some weight on him, but not too much weight because being that tall and being too heavy is not good for you. Ask Yao Ming. Being that tall and being over 300 pounds, you will get injured, especially if you're not big like Shaq. You know, that's what happened with Yao Ming. He was a slim dude, but too heavy for his own body, which is why injuries came and consumed his career, which is why Porzingis needs to be careful with his weight, which is why I say 250 pounds should be maximum for his weight that he needs to get to. So 7'3", 235 right now is ideal. I would, I would like to see it go up to 250, but right now that's an ideal, especially for only a second year in the NBA. I predict Porzingis to average 20 points per game, 10 rebounds per game, 2 blocks per game, doing what he does, helping Carmelo Anthony. And for, the I think, the second time in Melo's career, he'll have someone averaging over 20 points per game. The other person was Allen Iverson for that one and a half season that they did play together. Let's go on to Joe Kim Noah. Joe Kim Noah, he is sort of like... Take this with a grain of salt, but he's like a big he's like a big man version of LeBron James I know Jokim Noah hates him, but he's like a big man version of LeBron James because Jokim Noah can do everything on the floor He can score he can bring the ball up. He can pass he can play defense and he can rebound um, So Jokim Noah just needs to do what he does average around 10 points per game Maybe less eight rebound eight points per game ten rebounds per game and four assists per game is perfect for us ideal, you know just fit into the rotation um, it'll be perfect if you can put up those type of numbers. Now, let's talk about Brandon Jennings. Coming off the bench, Brandon Jennings is going to be vital because if the New York Knicks get into the situation where Derrick Rose does get injured, he is going to be our starting point guard. So we need him to stay healthy because if they both go down with injuries, the New York Knicks are screwed, which I highly doubt will happen. But anything can happen in this crazy league. Um, but anyway, Brandon Chen is coming off the bench, I would say around 10 points per game, around there doing what he does. And then Justin Holiday, you know, just coming off for de defensive purposes. He's a, he's a really great defender, to be honest. Uh, Louis Amundsen, you know, I don't really see him playing much minutes. But, you know, in the few minutes he does get, you know, just do what he does a few points per game, get some rebounds. Uh, but that's just our main core, man. And then Lance Thomas coming off the bench. I would say, you know, no more than 10 points per game would be perfect for us. So if you calculate all of that, let's say Carmelo with 27, Christos Porzingis with 20, that's 47. Then you have Derrick Rose with 15. That's, what did I say, 47, that's 62. And then you have Joe Kim Noah around 10, that's 72. Then you have Courtney Lee around 10, that's 82. And then you have Lance Thomas around 10, that's 92. And then Brandon Jennings around 10, that's 102. And all obviously it's plus or minus. This is all just hypothetical, so it's plus or minus. So around 102 points per game. Hopefully the New York Knicks can lead, you know, can hold their opponents to under 95 points per game hopefully because they're obviously going to have a winning record so hopefully you know they can finish around top seed in the east so they can have home court advantage to start off in the 2017 nba playoffs that is the breakdown of the 2016 2017 new york knicks 
in the comment section below. Let me know which team you would like to see for tomorrow's episode. I'm out of here. Let's get ready for the NBA season. It's been Steve. Peace.